Hello learners, I hope you remember what we studied in the previous lecture about polynomials. But before moving further, let's give a recap quickly. We studied about the uses of polynomial and then we went to what are algebraic expressions. Finally, we ended with polynomials, that is, we studied about degree of polynomials, types of polynomials and geometric representation. So let's move further in our journey to decode the topic polynomials. We will start with the topic zeros of a polynomial. So a zero of a polynomial px is the value of x for which the value of px is zero. If k is a zero of px, then px is equal to zero. Now here, px is how we represent a polynomial. That is, the polynomial is a function of x. Any value of x that makes the polynomial zero is known as zero of a polynomial. For example, consider a polynomial px equals to x square minus 3x plus 2. When x equals to 1, the value of the polynomial px is going to be what? Let's see. So I'm going to substitute 1 in place of x in this. So p1 is going to be 1 square minus 3 times 1 plus 2. And this is going to be what? This is going to be 0. Here this is going to be 1 square. Since px is 0 at x equals to 0, we say that 1 is a 0 of polynomial that is x square minus 3x plus 2. So what is a 0 of a polynomial? A 0 of a polynomial is any number which when put into that polynomial makes that polynomial 0. But what is the geometrical meaning of 0 of a polynomial? Let's understand that. Geometrically, zeros of a polynomial are the points where the graph cuts the x-axis. Isn't it cool? Like for example, we have one zero in a linear curve, then we have two zeros in case of like a parabola curve, and then we have three zeros in case of this zigzag kind of a curve. So we are having one zero, we are having two zeros, and we are having three zeros. So what are these zeros? These are the points at which the polynomial the curve actually is going to cut the x-axis and where the value of the polynomial will be 0. Now here this point A, B and C corresponds to what? Zeros of polynomials represented by the graphs. But I have a question. How many zeros can a polynomial have? In general, a polynomial of degree n has at most n zeros. Like a linear polynomial has one zero. A quadratic polynomial has at most two zeros and a cubic polynomial has at most how many? Three zeros. Now let's move further and understand the factorization of polynomials. So what exactly is factorization? The thing is that quadratic polynomials can be factorized that is split into its factors by splitting its middle term. All right. For example, let's consider one polynomial that is 2x square minus 5x plus 3. The middle term in the polynomial 2x square minus 5x plus 3 is minus 5x. And minus 5 can be expressed as what? Minus 2 plus minus 3. As minus 2 into minus 3 is actually 6. Or you can say 2 times 3. Thus the polynomial that is given that is 2x square minus 5x plus 3 can be written as 2x square minus 2x minus 3x plus 3. Now identify the common factors in the individual groups. So we are going to identify the common factors. So in 2x square minus 2x minus 3x plus 3, the factor that is common is what? x minus 1 and x minus 1. And if I'm going to take that common factor out, then this expression can be expressed as what? 2x into x minus 1 minus 3 times x minus 1 is going to express as what? Let's take x minus 1 common. Then what is left? 2x minus 3 is actually what is left. And this is how we factorize a polynomial. Now, just tell me, can there be any relationship between zeros of a polynomial and the coefficient of a polynomial? Let's find out. 
So for a quadratic polynomial, if alpha and beta are the roots of that quadratic polynomial, what are the roots? Where the curve of that particular polynomial is touching the x-axis or you can say maybe cutting the x-axis. So for example, ax squared plus bx plus c is the quadratic equation and alpha comma beta are the roots. So addition of those roots or I can say the summation of these roots is going to be minus b by a. That is sum of the zeros of that particular polynomial is going to be negative of coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square. Whereas the product of the roots that is alpha beta is going to be c by a that is product of zeros equals to constant term upon coefficient of x square. Now let's see it for the cubic polynomial as well. If alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of the cubic polynomial ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d, then alpha plus beta plus gamma is going to be minus b by a, whereas alpha, beta plus beta, gamma plus gamma alpha is going to be c by a. And the product of all the roots that is alpha into beta into gamma is going to be minus d by a. Finally, let's understand the division algorithm. To divide one polynomial by another, what exactly should we do? Let's see all these steps. So step one is arrange the terms of the dividend and the divisor in the decreasing order of their degrees. Here you can say that in both these cases, in decreasing order of their degrees, the terms are actually arranged. Step two is to obtain the first term of the quotient Divide the highest degree of term of the dividend by the highest degree of term of the divisor. Then carry out the division process. Here I can see what? That here it's x square and here it is x cube. So if I multiply this whole with x, the highest value of this is going to be equated to this. Like this is 3 and this will also become 3. So if I multiply x by this, it will actually become minus x cube plus x square minus x. And then I did normal subtraction and then I found out this. The last step is, and obviously similarly I'm going to do this again and again. And the last step here is that the remainder from the previous division becomes what? Like I just told, it becomes the dividend for the next step. Repeat this process until the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of your divisor. And here the degree of my remainder is actually less than the degree of the divisor. So it's time to stop the division and this is how the process is going to look and these are the steps which you need to follow. Now before actually going to the questions, let's see some of the algebraic identities that can help us to solve so many questions and save us time and they can actually be very handy at times. So these expressions are a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab plus b square. x plus a times x plus b is x square plus a plus b times x plus ab. a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. a cube minus b cube is a minus b times a square plus ab plus b square. a cube plus b cube is going to be a plus b times a square minus ab plus b square whereas a plus b whole cube is going to be a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube and the final identity which is given is a minus b whole cube is going to be what a cube minus 3a square b plus 3ab square minus b cube. Now let's do some questions to see whether we understood the concept completely or not. So the first question says, determine the quadratic polynomial whose zeros are 5 minus 3 under root 2 plus 5 plus 3 under root 2. Now the zeros are given. One zero is this and another zero is what? This. So finding the sum of the zeros. So firstly, what is going to be the sum of the zeros? If I add them, the sum of the zeros is going to be 10. Whereas if I take the product of these, so what is going to be the product? Now obviously this is 5 minus 3 root 2 and this is 5 plus 3 root 2. So can you see this identity a plus b times a minus b? And if I show you then a plus b my a plus b into a minus b is going to be what? Come on. 
this is the identity which we can use that is a square minus b square so if i go and if i actually use this identity a square minus b square then the product is going to be 5 square minus 3 root 2 whole square which is nothing but 25 minus 3 times 9 into 2 that is 18 and this is going to be what 7 so the sum of this is 10 and the product of this is going to be what 7 now how can we write the quadratic polynomial actually so p of x can be actually written as x square minus sum of zeros sum of zeros is 10 times x plus product of zeros product of zeros is 7 and this is how we reach the end of this example and we actually found the answer. Wasn't it simple? The roots are given, that is the zeros of a polynomial are given. We just have to find the product and the summation of these roots and then we need to write those things into a quadratic form. Let's move on to example number 2. Now example number 2 states that we have to find the zeros of a quadratic polynomial that is given. And that polynomial is 6x square minus 3 minus 7x. And we have to also verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial. Now, given quadratic polynomial is 6x square minus 3 minus 7x. So, let this be equal to p of x. We know that the zeros of a polynomial is a value when x is put into the polynomial and the value of the polynomial becomes what? 0. So hence 6x square minus 3 minus 7x is equal to 0. Now factorize the above polynomial which is written to find the value of x actually. So 6x square this can be actually written as 6x square minus 7x minus 3 equal to 0 and I can actually split by using the middle term and we can write 6x square minus 9x plus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. Where this will be 6x, 2x minus 3 plus 1, 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And then 3x plus 1 is common and 2x minus 3 equal to 0 is common. And when I'm going to solve this, my answer is going to be that x comes out to be minus 1 by 3 and 3 by 2. So hence the zeros of the polynomial that is given that is 6x square minus 7x minus 3 is going to be what? Minus 1 by 3 and 3 by 2. Thus your alpha is going to be what? Your alpha, I am writing it here. Your alpha is going to be, uh, you can say minus 1 by 3 and beta is going to be what? Beta is going to be 3 by 2. So this is what your alpha and beta are going to be. Now let's compare px that is 6x square minus 7x minus 3 that is written here with what? ax square plus bx plus c. So I'm going to compare this with this. Now here a is going to be 6, b is going to be minus 7 and c is going to be minus 3. That is a is going to be 6, b is going to be minus 7 and c is going to be what? Minus 3. And we have to verify the relationship between zeros and coefficient of the polynomial. So what are going to be the sum of zeros? Sum of zeros, we know that it's the coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square. And we have to then take the negative of this ratio. So that's why the sum is going to be what? It's going to be alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a. So if I'm, you know, adding alpha plus beta. So if I'm adding these two, that is alpha and beta. It's going to be minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 plus 3 by 2 which is equal to nothing but negative of b by a. So b is negative of 7 by a is 6. So this is going to be what 7 by 6 equal 7 by 6. Hence left hand side equals to right hand side. So this is proved but we need to also prove the product of zeros. But before this let me just erase this portion. Alright, so for your product of zeros, what we are going to do, we know that the product of zeros is nothing but constant term upon the coefficient of x square. Therefore, alpha beta, that is product, is going to be what? C by A. On substituting the values, we get what? We get minus 1 by 3 times 3 by 2, which is equal to what? It is equals to minus 3 by 6. And if I am going to solve this, 
it's going to be nothing but minus half equals to minus half again left hand side is equal to your right hand side therefore the relationship between the zeros of the coefficient of polynomials is actually verified so we have reached the end of our discussion hope you found that helpful but before going let's take a quick recap so we studied about zeros of a polynomial about factorization about division algorithm about algebraic identities about relationship between coefficients and zeros and finally we did solve some question to analyze what all we understood now you can visit eduref to attempt the respective tests so as to check your understanding on the topic stay tuned for more amazing videos thank you